In many rural cultures of East Africa, young girls are not getting an education. This is not because of a fanatical interpretation of some religious creed or because of any particular bias against girls. Rather, it is a result of long-held cultural traditions regarding the marriage of girls at a young age in exchange for a dowry of money or animals. As a young girl reaches puberty, men from the local village or even surrounding villages may begin to place offers to her parents. Some may offer sheep and goats. More wealthy individuals may offer money or cows. In some cattle raising cultures, the dowry offers can be quite high. Some offers may come in at 100 cows or more. This represents a lot of wealth to the parents. If they are struggling in poverty, the motivation to give their daughters in marriage at a very early age may be strong. Some parents may accept a low offer because they know the man and trust that he will be a good match for their daughter. Some may even consider a low offer because the young man may be someone their daughter knows and loves. But in most cases, parents may simply take the offer of the highest bidder, and their young daughter may be married to someone the family does not even know. The decision is completely up to my parents. I have no say in the matter. It is not about who I may like. It is only what my parents think is best. I was forced to marry an old man who already had three wives. We now have three children together. Some girls in our village are being married as early as the age of 10 so that the parents can get the cows. I am 13 already, and so it could happen for me at any time now. This cultural tradition of the marriage of girls at a very young age, combined with a general lack of awareness about the importance of education, means that an estimated 20 million girls in Africa are not getting a formal education. If there is a school close to the village, some parents might send their daughters for two or three years of schooling, but then pull them out of school so that their mothers can teach them how to become good housekeepers and good cooks. In many countries of Africa, girls tend to start school late and quit early. I really liked going to school, but after I finished grade two, my father refused to let me return. He wanted me to stay at home so that I could be ready to get married. This lack of education means that one more generation of young women all over East Africa will mature without even the ability to read. They will never be able to reach their full potential and the nations in which they live will be deprived of the immense human resource and services that they would have been able to provide if they had been able to attend school and get a good education. Located in Eastern Africa, South Sudan is the world's newest country. It is bordered by Ethiopia to the east, Kenya to the southeast, Uganda to the south, the Democratic Republic of the Congo to the southwest, the Central African Republic to the west, and Sudan to the north. It is home to 17 distinct ethnic groups that speak over 60 languages. Of the estimated 11 million population, the great majority 
are living in remote rural areas, in small traditional villages. While some agriculture is done, most of the people groups living in South Sudan are pastoralists. Following the traditions of their ancestors, they make their living by raising animals, primarily sheep, goats, and cows. After decades of civil war, in which an estimated two and a half million people lost their lives, a comprehensive peace agreement was signed with Sudan in 2005. After a six-year interim, a referendum was held where over 98% of the people voted to separate from Sudan and a new nation was born. Gaining recognition from the international community, the Republic of South Sudan became an independent and legitimate country on July 9, 2011. With such a long, devastating war, South Sudan has had to make their new start in the world with few resources, a dilapidated infrastructure, and very few educated professional people to administrate and help rebuild the country. Because of the difficulties of the long-lasting war, very few schools were operational during the civil conflict. As a result, even though peace has now come, and some of the old schools are being restored and opened again, the country is facing an immense shortage of qualified teachers. Students who make the effort to attend often have to wait their turn for a teacher to come to their classroom. The teacher that comes in may not have more than a grade six education themselves or have any training in how to teach children effectively. Other children, eager to start learning, meet their teachers under trees while the community endeavors to find the resources to build schools. Uh, the main challenges that are affecting education in Eastern Equatorial State is the problem of learning space. Children are learning under the open air or under the trees. It jeopardizes the conducive learning environment. Another challenge that we have is accommodation for teachers in rural areas whereby it is difficult for a teacher to be transferred from one area to another where he will be able to get accommodated to, even in schools that we have constructed. The challenge that has also affected the learning in South Sudan is the issue of teachers' remunerations. That is, the salaries of teachers is not adequately taken at the national level and state level. In addition to these challenges, children who come to school may find no desks, no paper to write on, no pencils to write with, and no textbooks to read. Learning is often restricted to what students can gain by repeating what the teacher says. Because of the lack of facilities and qualified teachers, children often are not able to pass government exams and are forced to repeat grades. Because of all of these difficulties, many parents in South Sudan are choosing not to send their children to school. People who live in a pastoralist culture often rely on their children to do a lot of the daily work. Children are expected to help with herding animals, fetching firewood, collecting water, cleaning around the home, and doing food preparation. Parents will ask, if I send my children to school, who will do the work? They may also ask, what will they learn at school that will help them become a better herder? Everything that they need to know to live their lives in the village and take care of animals, they can learn from us, just as we learned from our parents. Parents may also worry 
that if they send their children to school, they may lose connection to their culture or be subjected to bad influences from the other children that they meet. The closest school may be a very long or dangerous walk from their village, or the children may have to attend a boarding school in a nearby town where they are no longer under the guidance of their parents. I really don't see the importance of education. If the children are in school, they are not able to help their parents. I have always had my children around me, ready to help with whatever needs to be done. I have seen many examples of children who go to school, especially girls. When they go, they get spoiled. And even the boys, they never come back from the towns where they go to school. I am afraid that if our children learn how to read, it will change everything learning everything in English, they may lose their heritage. The very strong culture that we have right now will be lost. What will become of the future of our people if our children go to school? <laughs> One aspect of the cultural traditions that some of the elders in rural villages across East Africa fear may get lost is the custom of dowries. In pastoralist communities, the birth of a baby girl is welcomed with celebration because it means that a family's wealth has just been increased. When she gets married, the family will receive a lot of money or animals at the wedding. If a girl moves away to town or the capital city to get an education, will she ever honor her family with the traditional bride price? What if she becomes lost in city life? Parents may be afraid that she might use her education to move abroad. They may worry that she might fall victim to crime or prostitution. While the idea of a dowry system may seem strange to people who live in societies where there is no dowry, it can actually play a very important role in many cultures. Some people groups throughout history who have not had the dowry system built into their culture have sometimes treated their female children poorly. As it is usually the girl who leaves the family village to go and live with her husband in his village, the young woman and her working capacity is lost to the family. Because the boys will stay on, inherit the family property, care for elderly parents, and pass on the family name, they are often treated with more value. Without some kind of dowry system to protect them, girls may live a life of neglect. Some cultures of history who have had no dowry system may have even sold their girls into slavery or worse, killed them at birth. Even today, some cultures with no dowry system in place have a higher rate of abortion of unwanted female babies. People groups who have incorporated a dowry system into their way of life tend to protect and provide for their female children just as equally as their boys. The healthier, stronger, and more beautiful she is, the more cows she will be worth. Whenever we interact with people from another culture, we may notice things about their way of life that is different or strange to our way of thinking. We may even be surprised or shocked that their ways are so different from our ways. Our first reaction may be to tell them how they would be so much better off if only they would do things our way. This is called being ethnocentric, the conviction that our way is always the best way. However, 
If we are going to be effective in working and interacting with other people groups, we need to learn to respect their culture. What is culture? Culture is a closely integrated system of beliefs, customs, and traditions that govern the life ways of a people. It can include things like how they view the world and universe around them, religion, language, art, diet, assigned roles, values, morals, ceremonial practices, rituals, rites of passage, and traditions that govern marriage. If we take the time to learn about a people's culture, we will often discover that most of their rituals, customs, and traditions have a valid purpose that plays an important role in their survival as a people. For example, many people groups living in South Sudan cut patterns into the face and bodies of their children and young people. These cuts cause scars that remain on the body for the rest of their lives. Each tribe has a distinct and recognizable pattern. People living in the region who are familiar with the different patterns will know right away what tribe people are from just by looking at their face. We may look at a custom like this and wonder how it ever became a part of their culture and why it should ever continue today. However, if we investigate the practice further, we may discover that this custom that seems so strange to us has played an important role in their survival. Many tribes living in East Africa have a long history of hostility, livestock raiding, and war. When one tribe raids the village of another tribe, they may take more than cows and other livestock. They may also take women and children from the village to have them work as slaves. Later, when the tribe who was attacked gathers their forces to strike back against the raiding people, they are able to tell immediately, even in the confusion of battle, who are from their own tribe just by looking at them. Rather than killing them or hurting them, they are able to get their people back. When we understand some of the underlying purposes of a cultural practice, it can help us understand its importance and significance. If a people group has survived to today, it is because they have found through their history a balance of life ways and traditions that work for them. Anthropologists tell us that a culture slowly evolves and changes over time. Traditions and customs that seemed important generations ago may lose their value as new ideas enter that offer better solutions to the problems and challenges of life. However, it is important that these changes take place slowly. Rather than simply removing elements of a culture that may have a negative impact on a people, old customs need to be modified or carefully replaced with new traditions that solve a life problem in a better or more positive way. The cultures of many people can be in a delicate or fragile balance. When outside groups come in and randomly strip a people of certain aspects of their customs and belief systems, a culture can collapse. A people group can quickly become extinct and a way of life is forever lost. When people or organizations from other countries begin to work with tribal groups for development and a better life, they need to be sensitive and respectful to culture. 
To work responsibly and effectively, they need to be careful that when they try to improve a way of life, that they do not destroy a way of life. However foreign and different their life practices may seem to us, we need to understand that their culture is just as important and meaningful to them as ours is to us. The Tapasa love their culture. They love their animals. We love our families. We love our people. We love our land. ADRA, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, is a humanitarian organization that works in rural regions of many of the poorest countries of our world. They introduce simple solutions that meet some of the most primary needs of people to help improve their lives. They provide a convenient source of clean water close by to where people live. They engage in programs of health education and teach people about the importance of sanitation. They work with people to find new ways to grow better crops and gardens so they can provide better nutrition for their children. They help people get started in small businesses and introduce new ways to make money for their family's basic needs. In the country of South Sudan, ADRA Norway engages with the local community leaders, as well as regional and central governments, in programs that are helping children get an education. By building schools and training teachers to become good educators, ADRA Norway is helping the world's newest nation prepare their young people for a brighter future. Of everything that was destroyed in South Sudan during the war, perhaps the greatest loss has been human resources. Today, in order to rebuild, South Sudan needs teachers, doctors, nurses, engineers, technicians, civil servants, business people, and an educated workforce. The 21 years of civil war, the impact of it was much more on the human resource. By the time when the peace was signed, there were very few professionals, both teachers, people of uh, different professions. People have died, others have aged, others have issues that cannot allow them to function well. South Sudan is a country that has just uh, been uh, granted its status among the the nations and the quality of uh, citizen in terms of the education and service delivery remains a challenge. So what we need in South Sudan is education first. Through education we'll have the president, we'll have governors, we'll have legislatures, we'll have skilled laborers. Today South Sudan imports even skilled laborers from the neighboring countries. If you see the current development that is going ongoing in South Sudan, the technocrats, majority of them come from Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, and other neighboring countries. These are the people who get money, but they don't invest here. Instead, they take money and then they invest in, back into their country. So we continue to remain poor. My appeal is that let us focus on education. Education is the only way through which we'll be able to solve most of the problems that we are encountering today as a young nation. Working with local government authorities, ADRA South Sudan and ADRA Norway have developed a program to help the children of South Sudan get a good education.
First of all, they are building classrooms close to villages that have no schools. Children who have been learning under a tree are now able to move into a classroom. Now, children can learn in an environment that is sheltered from wind, rain, and other distractions. As an important part of any school construction, ADRA also installs a well and latrines for the convenience and good health of the students. They also provide desks and other school materials like books needed for a quality education. During times of drought, where some communities may suffer from lack of food, ADRA works together with village leaders, local governments, and the World Food Program to provide a hot lunch for the students. Learning is much easier on a full stomach. In some cases, this may be the only meal a child gets all day and can provide a positive incentive for parents to send their children to school. Secondly, ADRA has developed training programs where teachers can attend and learn how to become effective educators. A good teacher with no classroom is more valuable than a classroom without a good teacher. Dedicated volunteers who have always dreamed of becoming teachers, but who have never had the opportunity to get teacher training, are put through a program where they can become certified teachers. My aim was to become a teacher when I went to school, when I was still very young. I was, I was showing my father was a teacher. I say I will become like my father in future. It was my career when I was very young that one day I will become a teacher because there was one of our madam in our school there that taught us very well. I had met her and I say one day I will become a teacher. That is why today I'm standing in front of the kids, addressing the kids like our, my, our madam. We learn a lot from training. A trained teacher can have what is called a scheme of work and lesson planning before you enter the class. You scheme your work. You know the population in the class. You know who is slow learner. How can you capture the one who is slow so that they will rhyme together with the rest? A third way in which ADRA is helping children get an education in South Sudan is through a program of parent-teacher associations. In the meetings that are held in the villages, parents and village elders are invited to attend where they learn about the value and importance of education and why they should send their children, including their girls, to school. Trained facilitators lead them through all of the benefits that their community and country will experience if their children get a good education. The training that I have received at the ADRA PTA workshops have really helped me. I have become an advocate for education. PTA has not only helped me become aware of all the issues and importance of education, but has also encouraged me to sensitize other parents in our villages who have not gone through the training. I talk to my neighbors about the importance of sending children to school. I now have all my children in school. In the ADRA workshops, the issue of the dowry system is specifically addressed yet in a culturally sensitive and respectful way. Instead of suggesting that the people simply abandon the dowry system and just send their girls to school, parents and village elders are shown all of the positive benefits that they and their community will receive by sending their girls to school. It may be that they will have to wait a few more years before their young girls are finished their education and are ready to get married. But when they do, the young women will be much more valuable. Parents are introduced to the concept of how a daughter with a good education will be able to contribute to the welfare of them and their community for the rest of their life. With the wages she will earn from her career, the wealth that she will bring to her family will not just be a one-time payment, 
but a whole lifetime of care and support. When the time does come for her to get married, because of her education, in many ways, they can expect a double dowry. We believe that following this program is like a long-term savings plan for us. If we were to marry her off and get cows for her, these cows could be stolen from us by raiders. And then, what would we have gained? If my daughter continues on to finish her university education, she will be in a position to provide for us in many ways, including cows in the future. Children who do not go to school will spend their whole life in the village and die here. Girls who get a good education will have so many different opportunities to travel, get rewarding jobs in different places, and then bring back a lot of experience and service to the home community. It used to be that it was all about cows. Having a girl meant that you would one day get cows, and in the Taposa culture, to have many cows means wealth and respect. Some used to fear that if a girl went to school, they might lose the dowry. Now, thanks to the training that we have received from ADRA, more and more people recognize that a girl can go to school and the parents will still get a dowry. But now, they and the community have the added benefit of an educated woman. We now see the education of girls as a positive thing. Good morning, class. Good morning, Madam. How are you? We are very well, thank you, Madam. How are you, Madam? The challenges facing a new nation like South Sudan are huge. Developing infrastructure and providing services to the people can seem like an overwhelming task. It requires qualified people to build solid systems for engaging the people in decision-making. Providing education for all is a wonderful first step to reaching these goals. Working with sensitivity and respect for local cultures ensures that positive change will take place throughout the country while maintaining long-held traditions and customs. Because of the work of ADRA in many pastoralist communities of South Sudan, girls will now be able to look forward to a better future with a good education. Village elders can rest assured that the culture of their people will not be lost, and parents can look forward to a lifetime of support from their daughters, as well as a double dowry. Thank you.